So I will open the Deerfield School Committee meeting at 6 o'clock p.m. 6.02 p.m. I'll open the front here in some um, Lakeview Elementary School at 6.03. And Conway will convene when they have their full quorum. So once we fill you're on, right? Or you fill you're somewhere. I'm oh, there's Elaine. Oh, Elaine's there. Yeah. Do you got Elaine is now here. Can you can we convene Conway? No, we only have one short. So still only have two. Okay, so we'll have to wait and see when Jared or Michael or Denise should, or Denise shows. Denise apparently won't be here, but Phil and Elaine are here. Sorry. <clears throat> so we'd be looking for Michael or Jared. Is Jared there? Jared just came on. Okay, so you, you can. You can call call to order, Elaine. Sure. Uh, I'd call Conway's meeting to order at 6.04 p.m. Okay. We're on a roll. Thank you all. Um, public comment. I didn't see any, did we? You have no remote? No one here? Like in okay, and I, I don't I didn't get contacted to uh, say that there was any I didn't get anything in writing saying there was anything. So let me just double check to make sure. I'm sorry, folks. I just have gotten into town, so that's why I'm not there this evening. Um, I do not see any public comment. So. There would be no public comment for this meeting. All right. We're under new business then. Romney Associates presentation uh, to update us on anti-racism and equity work. So please, I will Sorry. turn it over to Darius to introduce Romney Associates. Thank you. Um, as everyone knows, I'm going to try to speak really loud so the mic picks me up well. Um, as everyone knows that we um, started our work with Romney Associates in about, I think it was October, November, um, and invite them here this evening to give us an overview of their, uh, what they brought us and, and, and such. Um, I'd like to introduce the three members from the Romney Associates. We have um, Pat Romney, who's there, and you'll make it so they can show up on screen so you can see them. And we have Paul Wiley, who you see right there. And we have Jen Cannon as well. Jennifer Cannon as well. So they're going to give a little presentation. So I hear Paul, are you leading off? I, I am not. Actually, uh, Dr. Romney's leading off. Oh. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Darius. We're very glad to be with you tonight, just to have a few minutes to share a bit about our work. We started working with Frontier Regional in October. Uh, of this academic year, and um, we came by via a referral from Amherst Regional School Superintendent Michael Morris, with whom we worked for, for many years, uh, and Darius has gracefully uh, introduced our team, Paul Wiley, Jen Cannon, and myself, and we're just going to take a few minutes to tell you what we've been up to in the last few months. I'll turn it over to Paul. So um, thank you all, and, and thank you, uh, um, Chairman uh, Cuddleback for, for allowing us some time on the, the agenda to make this brief presentation. Um, we will touch on some very important things, but uh, just ahead of our, our brief presentation, I'd like for you to know that we have uh, been very involved with over the last seven months with the school system, and they have been very receptive and eager to do the work. And uh, the, the community is excited about the work. And 
we are happy to be here. So we want to thank you all for the opportunity to talk a little bit about that. So from our end, Romney Associates provides consult, uh, consultation, guidance, and facilitation support to the uh, Frontier Regional Union 38 School District. We do this through regular meetings with the full anti-racism and equity committee. Uh, we have regular meetings with our three subcommittees comprised of a school culture committee, which is headed by uh, Dr. Pat Romney, the professional development and curriculum committee, uh, headed by uh, Jen Cannon, and the policy committee headed by me. You'll hear more about this, this part in a moment. We also provide additional support through interim work sessions with the three committees, along with planning meetings with Darius uh, Modesto, Sarah Mitchell. And from the beginning, we have extended our support to committee members to be by encouraging and accepting email and phone communications as needed um, in order to keep the process moving forward. Uh, so far, the energy in the district has been very good around this and we're making progress. And you'll hear a little bit more about what we're doing with the, uh, the overall anti-racism and uh, equity committee and the sessions that we're holding from them from Jen Cannon, who will uh, give you an, a, a summary of what we're doing with the entire committee, followed by we will talk a little bit, very little bit about our work with the, uh, the individual subcommittee so you get a flavor of that. So Jen, maybe you wanna just jump right in and talk about the, the full committee work. Sure, thank you, Paul. Um, before I start, I just wanna say what a pleasure it's been to work with your team and especially with the very dedicated teachers and administrators that I've had the pleasure of getting to know through the PD and curriculum committee. And the commitment to anti-racism and equity is so clear, the dedication and eagerness to um, not only get going on the work, but to expand it and sustain it. So I just wanna commend um, all the great effort in this direction. So I'll just give you a very brief um, overview of what we've been up to. We had our first A&E um, Anti-Racism and Equity Committee meeting on October 28th. And that was really an introduction to our team, to our principles of practice. We established community agreements and guidelines um, for our entire community. Um, we did that collectively. And then um, Dr. Romney went over our foundational framework, which really ultimately is about moving beyond the duality of us and them and really thinking about building community um, between the, the greater, the larger communities that our schools serve, all of our teachers, all of our students and all of our families. So really looking at the common good um, and what will serve everybody in this work. So that was our opening framework. And then we met again in December, December 1st, and the focus of that was shared language and vision. And we believe it's really critical to have um, common definitions and language as we're doing anti-racism and equity work um, so that everybody's on the same page and can be coordinated and supporting each other. So we spent quite a bit of time just going over some um, definitions and making sure that we have common understanding about racism, anti-racism, equity, and culturally responsive education. And in our February meeting, we did a 45-minute presentation um, really teasing apart the differences between critical race theory and culturally responsive education and really wanting to um, to make sure that everyone's aware of the differences and that we can be clear um, as a community of teachers, administrators, um, and students, what we're doing in terms of culturally responsive education and how we're aligned with the Massachusetts um, DESE frameworks. So that was, we really went into quite deep, some detail there. And then our last meeting in March, we presented um, a very useful continuum on becoming an anti-racist and multicultural organization um, that was developed by uh, Dr. Bailey Jackson and Dr. Rita Hardiman. 
And um, we really, I think you all have it. Is, is that correct? Did you all receive it for tonight's meeting? Did anybody let me know if, if you have it in front of you? No. Not yet. Okay. So we'll we'll make sure that everyone on the committee gets it. Um, it's, it's a very useful um, continuum and we broke out into discussion groups afterwards and most, most folks came to agreement that we were moving along the continuum in a steady pace and somewhere between a three and four out of a, um, a six part scale. So it's, it's hard to explain it if you don't have it right in front of you, but we can, we can circle back to it in another meeting. Um, and then we have our last meeting coming up later this month in April, and we will be um, summarizing the work that we've done this year and planting seeds for next year. So thank you. Very good. Thank you. <clears throat> so Jen um, and everyone, I think we'd like to just say a little bit, a sentence or two about each of our subcommittees. And I'll start uh, by saying that I have been working with Erica Higgins-Ross and Kelsey Krop who have co-chaired the school culture committee. And the committee as a whole has been working on developing some social action norm statements uh, for each of the schools. We're trying to, we will finalize these in the next month or two. But we're trying to get some very simple statements that uh, students at the various schools can, uh, can buy into. So I'll give you a couple of examples. Coming from the high school, a suggestion was that there be a statement like, we honor diversity through accepting everyone's different languages, foods, culture, religious practices, identities, et cetera. Or at the elementary school level, some folks have advanced the idea of saying very simply, at our school, we include everyone. So that's mostly what our work has um, done this past year is developing those social norm action statements. And I do want to mention the excellent work that uh, Erica Higgins-Ross, who's a parent, has begun to do with the captains of the sports teams in order to also help develop um, positive culture and anti-racist practices in the sports team. And I'll turn it back over to Jen to talk a little bit about PD and curriculum. Sure. So I've been working with Holly Johnson and Amanda Mosea as the co-chairs. Um, they've been um, just wonderfully organized, and um, it's it's been a pleasure to work with both of them. Um, primarily, we've been a coordinating body, sharing information, as you can imagine, so teachers and administrators across the district. So um, it's both been our challenge and our strength, um, sharing information and coordinating with each other. Um, our other focus has been looking at professional development and really inviting teacher input for this current year. Um, teacher suggestions were taken into account and Sarah was very responsive and um, planning for next year for professional development for teachers. Um, we've also done a bit of work around shared language, um, developing common language across the schools and uh, developing definitions that all teachers can feel um, that they can get behind. So that's primarily where we've been. And over to you, Paul. So thank you. Um, and uh, the committee um, I I lead is the uh, the policy committee, and uh, I have uh, working with me two sub chairs, uh, two co two co chairs. Excuse me, not sub chairs. Co chairs, Lou Vincent and Karen Ferrandino. And I have to say immediately before I say anything else how hard they are working to to bring to light the kinds of work that needs to be um, brought forward in, in this district to get the work done around anti-racism and, and equity. Our main thing has been to work on policy and uh, what policy means. And we're growing to a point where we understand that policy is not just a set of rules, but policy is actually uh, a way of embedding benefits into the school district. And you know some of the benefits of school of this in this school district will be uh, coming out of the work we're doing on anti-racism and equity. And we've developed a statement which is about ready to be reviewed by our, our whole committee, which provides an umbrella statement about what the school district believes, 
and what its intentions are with respect to what it's going to do. Not only what it believes, but how do these beliefs drive intentions? And uh, there are definitions about uh, racism and anti-racism, equity and educational equity. We've been working hard to perfect those in a way that when we present them uh, to folks to approve as uh, policy documents, that we can see clearly the direction we're, we're going in and we can, uh, you know, receive guidance from them on the way, you know, on the way forward. In addition to that, I want to say that uh, there are policies already in place, as you know, with the school district, and those policies are fine. They are clear and they are well written and many of them are statute related, as we know. But there are ways to embed the language of anti-racism and equity in those policies to bring them alive and to uh, have them be more coherent and, uh, and understandable and accessible to not only the teachers and the students, but also to the broader um, uh, Frontier Regional School District community. I'm very happy with the work that they're doing. And uh, I wanna say maybe, in, in, in summary a bit, like this is a process. This is not something that we arrive at suddenly at the end of the school year kind of thing. This is something that is each year we're building on the next layer of what the work is that we have to do. So uh, I remember I mentioned in, in a comment to our, our committee, I, I think Frontier Regional um, uh, School Union 38 is on the verge of success in this area. And I believe that uh, this could be an example for some things that need to happen in Western Massachusetts. So this is an opportunity that I think that is being embraced, everybody. And um, you know, the hard work still lies ahead, but I, I think we're, we're doing a good job. Um, for the school committee, we've received uh, tremendous support from the school, the superintendent, from um, uh, Sarah Mitchell, uh, certainly who we meet with on a, on a regular basis. And I think we're, we're moving this forward in a way that I think the district will be proud of. So that's what we have to offer tonight. Um, Darius, did we get, did we do our seven minutes? <laughs> I think you did well, thank you very much. Uh, okay. Um, you know, I just wanna kind of wrap because it's exactly what what Paul said there at the end, it's been great to have Romney Associates come to us and be an outside lens about that next layer. If we can take a layer off each, or multiple layers off each year, be an outside lens, they also, is, you know, a lot of, you know, we had a whole working group, do them, you know, talk with them, not just run everything off the current administration, um, it's really helpful. Um, we are, um, we are going to continue our relationship with them next year, um, we continue our work there, so we already had we had a planning meeting last week with them here and they came out to visit us and, um, and so we're starting that as well so it's kind of and I, I do would like to open up the school community if they have questions um to them as well but i want to say thank you uh, thank you for the presentation thank you for all the work you've been doing for our district thank you and I will echo, echo those thanks uh, for all your hard work and all of the hard work of everyone serving on all the various subcommittees as well. Um, do we have anyone from the committees or any people that are working with the Romney Associates that want to speak? So raise your hand or I've got limited numbers of people on here, but <clears throat> we should be able to figure this out. Does anyone have any comments? thoughts looks like we're good out here Ken okay and it looks I think it's good here <laughs> I'm not seeing anything um, okay well thank you very again thank you very much for being here this evening and providing the update we're I think we're all excited to continue to see the work in progress and glad to hear that progress is being made thank you again so thank you. have thank a good you. evening <clears throat> so thank have a great you. evening thank you okay um next on the joint agenda is professional development plan um with sarah mitchell <laughs>
Is Sarah with us? I am here. I'm trying, to out, I'm trying to figure out Ken where to stand. So I guess you'll all see the screen anyway. So I'll stand for I'll stand for this audience. <laughs> St stand for the people in attendance, yes. And it, I, I, I did not start off by saying how wonderful it is to see an in-person meeting taking place and uh, to see people gathered around the table finally. Um, I apologize again for not being there. I just have come in from uh, travels and uh, landed in Deerfield late this afternoon. So thank you. Go ahead, Sarah. Great. Thank you. Uh, so get the next slide. Yeah, yeah. You can do that. yeah, that's right. Yeah, if my tap will work. So, no, okay. <laughs> I got my answer. No tapping. Um, so, despite the fact that we are still in pandemic mode, um, we did an incredible amount of professional development this year um, at both the elementary and the secondary level. So, I want to take you through a little bit of history of what we did this year and then project off till next year. Um, I just sent out some surveys to teachers in the last couple of days, and I usually get your overwhelming response in the first couple of days, and that's been true. Teachers have really stepped up and given us some feedback on both what was happening this year and planning for next year. So at the elementary level, um, as around the associated mentioned, we did some work around culturally responsive teaching and learning. Um, we had the pleasure of having Goldie Muhammad speak to us a couple of times and for those of you who know her work um, she is um, on the forefront of providing curriculum guidance to people that are trying to develop lessons in units um, we also at the elementary level did some specific unit development and really got into specific lesson development using that framework to guide um, to guide those topics as Many of you know mental health is on the rise. Um, we did several workshops with uh, Bright, um, and they are um, an institution that works out of Brooklyn. Uh, we actually have a local person that works out of Western Massachusetts, and she was able to provide ongoing professional development about what's happening with mental health with youth and adults. Talk to teachers also. You may want to mute um, Sarah's up and be back. Um, there was also some school-based specific professional development. Sorry, uh, some school-based professional development um, in each elementary school. The way that they have the model, they have um, we have district days, we have school-based days, and then we have uh, teacher proposal or teacher develop days. So for the school-based days, um, some of the buildings worked on calibrating student writing samples. Um, increasing student discourse through uh, peer feedback, uh, the impact of poverty on teaching, and then social emotional learning. So they each had different pieces and um, at some of the admin meetings we were able to talk about some of the work that they're doing in each of the schools. Uh, you have the next slide. Okay, next slide please. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Um, at the secondary level, it's a similar lineup. Um, we also had uh, watched uh, Goldie Muhammad. She did a presentation for us one evening. We had to actually do it at night because her schedule is so jam-packed. But we had incredible attendance. Um, we also worked on curriculum development and integrating all of the pieces that we've been working on with professional development. And this looks like a very scattered list. Um, but this is the professional development that we've worked on at Frontier for the last eight to 10 years. We have had a lot of new faculty and a lot of uh, turnover in that time through retirements. And so this was a bit of a catch up year to get everyone on the same page with some of the philosophies and some of the uh, PD beliefs and um, curriculum beliefs that we've had over the last eight years and get everyone kind of at the same, on the same starting page. Uh, we also had the bright workshops We've adopted a new special ed delivery model at the high school. Um, we were trying to mimic that middle school model that's been working so well for us for years, and it's it's going very well. So we have a special educator that's assigned to each grade level now, and rather than having special educators spending all of their time doing skills development in special class in separate classes, we have that pace block or that C block, and that's when all the skills work happens. So that our special educators at the high school can push into classrooms and make a much more inclusive environment. So we're really pleased with the way that's going. Um, we also did writing across the curriculum. Um, historically, we've done the John Collins 
writing across the curriculum this year we brought in the western mass writing project and they did some similar workshops in helping to integrate writing in all the core content areas actually all content areas not even just core um, across the curriculum we're also looking forward to actually uh, next friday we're going to do a restorative justice um, workshop and it's really about helping students to self-regulate and teaching them um, having them pay back for errors they may have made behaviorally to the community rather than just a straight discipline approach. Uh, so that will be the first workshop that we're going to do with middle school um, next Friday. So looking at next year, we're going to continue some of our themes. Uh, we'll continue with cult culturally responsive education. Um, we're also looking at, and I'll give a little more detail on the next two, um, on the next couple of slides, creating collaborative classrooms, K through eight. Um, any of you who are in schools these days know that our students are behind a year or two. And it's not just behind academically, because academics we've been catching up pretty well on, but it's really about who they are as human beings. They've lost a year or two of development. And it's just now that we're starting to see things level out with students. So we're really interested in doing something to help um, make that come along. We're going to do some examining student work through PLCs, and then we'll do some continued curriculum revision and development. So just a little bit about uh, professional learning communities, and that it's a real buzzword these days. Uh, people use the word PLC for everything from a bunch of teachers getting together and talking to the actual uh, before um, definition of getting together and doing data analysis. So we're going to work with Solution Tree to work closer towards the data analysis and really analyzing student work, calibrating student work samples. It's been a few years since we've had um, the opportunity to do that, and we want to get back to the pre-pandemic track we were on with assessment. Um, so we'll go ahead and switch to the next one. So PLCs ask four questions. Um, what do we want all students to know, understand, and be able to do? So what's the objective? Um, how would we know if they learn it? So that's our assessment. Um, how would we respond when some students don't learn it, our RTI and our IEP process? And how would we extend learning for students who are already proficient? So how are we going to stretch those learners that are already there? We're also looking at um, responsive classroom. I just had a conversation today, so it's very much in its infancy, um, but we're looking at bringing in some of the responsive classroom strategies that we had in the past. Sunderland Elementary School, oh, it's probably been 12 years now or something since we had all of the faculty trained on responsive classroom. Um, and so we're exploring what that will look like, um, not through the, not just the elementary, but also looking at middle school, because we could really use some classroom strategies and some norms and some routines to help our kids get back on track um, developmentally. <coughs> um, this kind of tags on to what the Romney Associates were talking about. We're in the process of examining, um, you know, we're looking at cost, but we're looking at doing an equity audit um, in our district. And an equity audit would bring another outside lens into the district and would basically leave us with a to-do list to help us guide this work um, as we continue forward. So we would have them look at uh, policy, do a real analysis. The Romney Associates has already done a little bit of that for us, as well as along by developing some process, some uh, policies, which is great. Uh, they would look at uh, curriculum to see what our resources are primarily, and are they culturally responsive. Um, we do artifact analysis. This is essentially looking at student assignments and see what we're asking students to do. That would cover more than just um, equity. It would cover rigor, it would cover relevance and all those different components. Um, and also data analysis to look at our AP courses, to look at our special ed numbers. Do we see disproportional uh, gender, race, ethnicity, um, SES? And then in addition, they would come on site and do classroom observations to get a feel like in our be able to give us some there. And then to finish up, this is a quick summer program. Um, we're, we're going to be mimicking what we had for summer last year. So we'll have early childhood programs. We'll have elementary programs that will be happening in three of our buildings, um, Deerfield, Sunderland, and Conway. 
Waitley students, again, will go over to Deerfield, um, just kind of an economy of scale piece. We'll continue to do our Jumpstart program here at the middle school for students that are entering grades uh, seven, eight, and nine. And then um, ESSER funding is really helping us out because we'll be able to run that credit recovery program again. Um, I will say anecdotally that the numbers for summer school for credit recovery are much lower this year than they were last year. And that makes me very happy that you know fewer students are falling into that situation where they have to have to make up courses. Uh, we'll also support our students that uh, be able to do the K through 12 and then we'll have all our traditional programs. Questions? You guys have got a long meeting ahead of you. I don't mind. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah. Thanks, so, Sarah. I got to throw another thank you out to Sarah. As you guys all remember, when we've had this before, it's usually the team, the elementary coordinator, and Sarah doing it. Sarah's really had to pick up and the principals to become the lion's share of that curriculum transition. So um, I just want to say thank you publicly and thank the principals who also, we had to divide up a lot of the work and done the principals who, as we know, are already close to their, I say close to their max. Um, they're all probably texting each other now. Um, but I just want to say thank you recognize the I just wanted to add that Bright is out of Brookline, Mass, not out of Brooklyn. Oh, thank you, Elaine. Thank yeah, and we we use it extensively, are involved with it extensively in the Holyoke uh, School District. Other questions? There's a lot there. Can you go back to maybe the third slide? I was worrying about the, the change in special education delivery. Like, how are we measuring improvements and where we see the improvements? Yeah, that's a, it's a One, really, really good question. Oh, are you talking about um, using the case block and assigning one person to each grade level? How's that working? So practically speaking, it's working very well. Data speaking, I don't have data yet. Um, we really are just, we, technically we started it last year, but because it was the pandemic and we were remote, there was just no being able to measure it. Um, so this is our first year. Um, and you bring up a, a really, a really good point. Um, so as we are starting to look at data kind of across the board, that will be one thing that we're going to have to look at. So we know, we know from the, you know, the real anecdotal point of view that it's working better for teachers is working better for students because they have another instructor that's able to push into the class and we're doing some collaborative teaching models. And that's what a lot of the training was around with the collaborative teaching approach and how do you do that on the fly quickly because we you know there's not enough time to plan all of that. Um, so anecdotally it's working, but you're right. We need to follow up with, so are we seeing fewer referrals? Students that are in classes that are supported by a second educator, are we seeing increase in performance with students that are on IEPs? Um, yeah, I mean, that's a struggle right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, Hearing nothing else, we can move on in the agenda to the proposed school calendars. Um, so you should have it digitally, to those who are in the room, I made copies. This is paper. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't seen that. So the blue is Frontier, the red is 38. It should have been on the same sheet, but they run on back to back. But They're basically the same, but just some different terminology when it comes to parent conferences. Um, but I'll, I'll do the quick overview. Um, we're looking at starting school on the 30th of August. Um, I've already talked with both associations. Um, in order for us to go before the last day of last Wednesday in August, we have to have an agreement with the association to do so. And we agree to start the school back on Monday. 
suits back on Tuesday um, with a, a Friday, again, that long Thursday day week. Uh, and the idea behind that, I know that we kind of talk about um, each year, the idea is to have a short week, especially when we talk about the under two, K one to two. It's a long week and get four or five days um, then holding it together, especially uh, you know, some of them from the school for the first time and that kind of thing. Um, and then we go to a four day week, the following week, and then a five day. So it's kind of a transition in. I think the teachers really, um, when I presented it to them, they, they asked for that as well. So um, that's the start of the school year, just to kind of explain it. We have the early releases as usual, um, put into the calendar and half day for parent conferences at the elementary land. We really do have to keep our schedules um, locked for the secondary for child care and um, those kind of things. So on today's where there's parent conferences and professional development um, at the secondary. So you can see that there. Uh, and the rest I think is kind of self-explanatory from town to year to town year. So um, any questions you have on me on there? A lot of the very similar patterns we've done in the past now. So yeah, according to the contract, we can't start we can't start without approval from the association before the last Wednesday in August. And the last Wednesday in August happened to be the last day of August. So normally you could on a, on a different year, almost yeah. get a full weekend um, that day. And um, it goes into the you know into the previous week, you know, you know I had discussions with them. This is kind of as it felt. Uh, we bring new teachers back on the Friday prior. So we talked a little bit about that as well. The positive and negative step. The positive part is they get to relax a little bit after getting their introduction to school or maybe they'll get in their class until the weekend if they need to, if they have that kind of nervous energy. Um, you know, the new teachers there, but that's the plan there. Just have a question about the end of the ending of the school year because I thought that. Right. We, we did not in the budget um, allocate funds to pay salaries for JP. For support staff, IAs, and administrators, that was added as an option. But and that it's all IAs are only if it ends up being a school day. Right. Support staff and administrators. Teachers will not, they'll just have an extra day off. They don't get paid for holidays under the new contract. So, Phil, this is correct though. If we have four snow days next year, those trigger the June T follow up for the other one. That's fine. Cost is where the work on there. It's like 5,000 or 8,000 students across the whole district. So, um, so we have to vote on this. So we'll start, hey Ken, you want me to start off with Frontier? Why don't you start with Frontier and get the Frontier calendar All right. taken care of? I'll take, I'll take a motion to set the calendar for Frontier. Okay. Olivia, Bill, we'll do a roll call. Uh, Bob? Yes. Damien? Uh, yes. Mary? Yes. Keith? Yes. Missy? Yes. Olivia? Yes. Judy? Yes. Bill? Yes. Lynn? Yes. Are you going to do individuals at the, at the elementary? You have to. Yeah. Okay. Yes, we have to do each individual. That's why we convened each, each committee. So um, I don't know if Judy wants to call the rolls or... <laughs> Uh, first, I need a motion. I'll make a motion from Waitley. Thank you, Mr. Sunderland. I'll make a motion for Sunderland. I'm sorry, guys. I don't know who's in here. Oh, Maury. Hello, Maury. This is your face. Are you going to listen? <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I don't know. Olivia, between you and Miss Nisa. Carrie. Carrie. Okay. Carrie. Yeah. 
it's easier your names are beneath you on the screen. Okay, I have Bob, and then who's the second? Ray, and who's the second? Peter. Okay. I'll make a motion for Conway. Conway goes first. Elaine? Yes. Jared? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Michael is absent. Denise Simpson and Phil. Yes. Deerfield. Ken? Yes. Mary? Yes. Gary? Yes. David? Yes. Sunderland? Greg? Yes. I think Erica's on. You missed Erica. Oh, sorry. Yep. Yep, I'm here. I, and yes, I can barely hear you out there, but yes, I hear. I, I'm a yes. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Erica. I didn't see you because I'm not. Um, Sunderland? Greg? Yes. Jessica? Yes. Megan? Yes. Keith? Yes. And Peter. Yes. Yeah. I really didn't got this down. Are you sure? Are you sure you didn't know what I'm doing? I got some of those meetings. Hey. The big question. Thank you. Um, um, next, Ken. Did we get more? You uh, got Waitley. I didn't. I, that as, Waitley, that was not an intentional flight. I got distracted <laughs> by my own stuff. Uh, Maureen. Yes. Bob. Yep. Beth. 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 Sorry. No, I can't go all right, okay. Now. I think that got them all. I didn't mean to question. As Erica said, it's it's not the greatest volume here in my headphones. So, um, so the next item of business would be the proposed school committee meeting schedules. So, like, as we were voting, and for those of you at home, you can click on your digital one. Um, the major changes is that um, I felt like the October joint meeting was not as successful as we had in the past. Um, and so I'm proposing that we go to normal meetings that month. Um, we'll also, at the elementary level, have a new um, curriculum director. So we give that person to be able to come out and each, each person, each committee, we give you know, uh, presentations to each one there as well. Um, I do want to keep the December. Right now, no scheduled regular meetings. I've had that work this year. I didn't think we felt like we were missing anything from there. Um, and then continue to join me in April. Um, I changed the start time to five because the hour and a half is getting tight. If you're going to meet in person, that's the game plan. That's, it makes it me running out, really, you know, speeding across town. Um, but I also, that's, you know, I need to hear from Dr. New folks if that's going to be too early. Um, we started doing that anyway. I think in some cases we try to rotate, but that's the summary there. You can kind of look at it and see how it fits. So I, I, mean, I, I agree that the joint meetings don't really work as well as the individual meetings, but the reason we went to joint meetings was to make the professional vibe of our administrators just a little tiny little bit easier. And um, I thought it was a decent trade off um, to have a better chance of keeping you all around. And, uh, and, and trading a little bit of meeting efficacy for that purpose is the whole reason we started it. So, but I, I, no hear, I hear you, and I agree. <laughs> you know, um, at the same time, you know, we've had to do a lot of joint meetings um, just because we can't and all of those changes. So, um, there's sometimes they're more hectic than the individual meetings. Um, I don't know. I, I hear you at the same time as well. Um, you know, Shelly and I also talked about other major changes. If you're not doing a triple day, um, that was just too much on us. So we've asked Waitley to go on a different day, but still stay early because um, they're, they're smaller group and they know their schedules, but they, they've been okay with the four o'clock meeting. 
so that does help us understand where these mega health growths are in folks. Mm -hmm. so, can, can yes. Uh, you want me to go first, Frontier, for this, this schedule? Absolutely. That would work. A motion for Frontier to accept the school committee schedule. Jesse? Okay. Olivia? Bob? Yes. Yes. Mary? Carrie? Yes. Erica? Yes. David? Yes. Okay. Uh, Conway, can I get a motion? I'll make a motion. Uh, Elaine? Yes. Jared? Yes. Michael? No. It's not there. Uh, Bill? Yes. And Sunderland. Second. Second. Greg? Yes. Keith? Yeah. Jessica? Yeah. Peter? Yes. And Megan? Yes. So that is, that is all of us. Okay. Thank you, Judy. Um, so we're on to the next item is the first read of the MASC policy update, Section D, Fiscal Management Goals. So as part of the packet, I don't know if, if John, did John put the summary page from MASC on there? Right. I'll send it out to you, but basically I'll just quickly read through it. But basically, um, these are fiscal policies. The changes, Michelle's gone through all of them, I've gone through all of them. Um, they're basically clarifying language. There's no real substance of change. Um, they're also adding, whenever you see the, uh, they're adding to the regional districts, whenever you see a dash one, that's where the regional agreement be applied to the policy. So basically, um, you know, MASC, you know, sent these out to us. Um, we adjusted them slightly to make sure they fit our either union or region that kind of stuff but basically ensuring that all the language is aligned with constitutional and legal principles of school funding confirming that the policy remains focused on the legal authorities of the school committee updating the legal references clarifying the process there were a number of places in prior language that may have been left the process of the school committee work unclear this update tries to make the process easier to follow um, incorporating best practices fiscal best practices from across the state have long been part of the MSC discussion about the members, um, and then clarifying regional policy and distinctions. I think that's where those were ones we're adding because we didn't have a regional language when it comes to these. So these are fiscal policies that we're governed by. Um, they're kind of dense reading if you had to read the room, um, if you have room yet, let's just say. Um, and so anyways, it's a, it's a first read, so you're getting them tonight. Um, if you have questions and such between now and the next meeting, we can reach out to Shelly or I and try to answer that. Or if we answer the next meeting, but let's know in advance. We can hunt down to something we can you know, answer. Okay. There are Thank more you. coming, by the way. Um, <laughs> and some I'm putting a little hold on to because they're connected to um, our anti racism equity work. And so I want to make sure that we have some of that language get brought into. Tweak some of the language there, and so we try to tweak and tweak again. Apply that from the materials coming out of the policy of the anti-racist. Excuse me, Darius. Do we have to bring the group together again? We do. Are we going to have a bunch of policies coming up, or the policy committee? There's there's probably about four more. 
Okay. Um, and so, uh, no. Okay. But, you know, no, but there's another, another group that we can talk about. So, so. Okay. The problem is, so you guys have a policy subcommittee. You know, I know you know that, but to get the policy subcommittee together to go over something that's kind of vetted by NASC, it's up to you. If you want to do it, we can do it. But a lot of them are kind of plug and play, you know, so. Um, and then, you know, there's ones that change it. They're more you know, particular to our district, you know, if we can change to our district, that'd be something we look at. So, um, and so that's kind of, that's kind of how things are. You know, your policy is something you want to meet with, we'll go with this next group. Um, we may have to, because we may want to do some changes. To it. But I'll look at it a little bit more closely. These were so dry, they're just financial. Okay. Barry, is that a question? Some of them changed regional, uh, regional district school committee to just school committee. Some of them still have that. I don't know. If they have a dash one, it's, it's referring to the regional school committees, and it's a little bit, a little bit different link. It's slightly different about that. And then if it, it's not the dash one, it's just the regular school. Committee. So what is the definition of the regional school? That's frontier. Your regional, your regional agreement. <clears throat> You're up, Ken. So that's it. Okay. Uh, renewal of service contract with DuPair law offices. So, um, first read. And I would imagine that that policy would be discussed at individual school committee meetings next month. No. Yes. 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 Okay. So you'll be able to be a smaller group. You can ask more intimate questions about legal policy. Right. Or financial policy, right? Fiscal um, policy. Fiscal policy, there you go. <laughs> so you guys do have a um, a contract with the Decree Law Offices, and it's been every two years we renew it, and it's due. So um, they just finished our negotiation. Those are the negotiation team you saw that uh, Russ first came in his work. Um, and so, we'll have to right. that contract so that we can have it for next year. So, are, are you looking for a vote or are you looking for a, what do you? You're voting to renew a contract, yes. Okay, because it didn't have vote next to it, but I assumed we were voting. We'll start off with Frontier for motion in a second, please. Uh, Bob? Yes. Damien? Yep. Mary? Yes. Keith? Yes. Missy? Yes. Olivia? Yes. Judy? Yes. Bill? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Lynn? Yes. What question? Do you have a, a, another one, or do we only assign this one? It's another one. Okay. Uh, that way, can we get a motion? Was that Conway? That was Conway. Yes, I'll make a motion. Hold on. Uh, second. I didn't even make note of that. Jessica's asking a question about whether or not this is the joint committee versus the individual committees. Because we open, and I'm going to talk about this in a second, because we open as individual committees, I would ask that each individual committee voted because right. they're representing your district, which is a little limit. Okay, so I missed the motion. Tom, can you repeat? Uh, I made a motion and Jared seconded. Thank you, Jared. Okay, uh, Elaine? Yes. Jared? Yes. And Phil? Yes. Deerfield, can I get a motion? Second. Uh, Ken? Yes. Mary? Terry? Yes. Erica? Yes. David? Yes. Sunderland, can I get a motion? Second. Uh, Greg? Yes. Keith? Yes. Jessica? Yes. Peter? Yes. Megan? Did you say yes, Megan? Yes. Thank you. Uh, wait, yes. Can I 
Yes. That was everybody. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> um, we we have one more item on the open agenda, and then I think we would uh, move to towards executive session and an adjournment of the Frontier Regional. But we have a a topic here that Darius and has brought up over the past couple of years. Uh, while we have a Union 38 structure, we don't technically have a written agreement that uh, identifies all of the bits and pieces that we need to conduct business. So uh, Darius, did you want to talk about this? I mean, we, we need to work towards drafting a formal Union 38 agreement. Correct. So we, we've gotten together as Union 38 to make decisions. And one of the questions, we don't have an agreement that says how we do that. Right now, as you, if you go back to you know, the hiring of, go back to the hiring of a superintendent, right now there's no way to um, work out legally if there's disagreements between different members of the union or the region's part in that. Um, and so they created a simple work through, um, but the actual agreement has never existed or can be found. This goes back to, I know Marty Barrett was looking for it when she first started. She visited town offices trying to find this agreement. And so the question is whether or not it ever existed. Where's Bob Decker? Please call in Bob. You know, you're, you're so you're, you, 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 you have a copy on his desk. But so what I want to do is I was thinking of creating a subcommittee to work on this because it's going to um, give you the outline and we can look at, I do have some examples already from other districts. There's, there's seven districts that are set up like us in the, in the state about how to work through the processes of hiring, how to work through the process of some of the stuff that we already have set with women in writing. How do you, where is it in writing that says how the central office is building? You know, those kind of things we run on, we've been running on, um, uh, how we've always done things in the past, but it'd be nice to get things in writing because when it's a problem, then it's going to be a problem. You know, right. People are fighting over whether or not, I'll use myself as it's easiest thing to do. You're fighting whether or not to renew a contract. How do you just, how do you, you know, how do you uh, work that out? You know, um, not fighting, it's discussing um, that kind of stuff. And so it's better to work it out now while you're not discussing something that's not. Yeah, really shaking your head. Well, you know, if if this was a, a, a discussion to amend or alter the regional agreement, all four towns would have to vote yes at town meeting. So this will have to be voted, I believe. So this this group would look at what needs to be included in this. What's the legality of right now? I look at the legality. That's why I wanted each community to, to vote their, their things. So right now, you recently came out one person, one vote. And you have different weights of town and population. So you have to make sure that you're legally set when you start doing those kind of votes. Um, that's why, again, that's why it's nice when you really just, just make sure everybody votes. Everybody votes for okay. Um, but if you start getting weekly three votes, Deerfield three votes, Deerfield could say, how can we have the same weight on the choosing of a, of a right. population? Data? So there's all these different things that legally you can do within that. But I want to, but it's this group would look at that. One person, one vote applies to spending. This would be a plot. This would be setting up an organizational structure in which we can spend. So I, I, I don't know. I don't. So, so I don't have, this this or this should be all four towns at equal weight. Okay. And um, well, for an agreement, I think yes, yes. And and I and I look back at how the towns went about agreeing in 1954. Here it is, um, and. It was the chair of the school local school committee, the chair of the select board, and the chair of the finance committee. All three towns agreed to negotiate each other. Um, and in fact, if it has to go to town meeting, and it's only school committee, they give up. Um, well, I think we have to. I think you have to look at what is 
what it takes. I've seen other agreements uh, for unions, and they have kind of a structure in place and how to do that. It might be right for the financial or maybe wrong in that area. Again, that's part of the work will be to discover the different areas that we should have covered. But we, I mean, this committee does have, we're fortunate that you guys do work very well with it. But we've watched some of our neighboring districts having trouble there. And all it takes is a, a group that doesn't want to work together. And then I don't know how you're going to solve some of the issues. Bill, when I'm talking about setting up a region, right, we, we have an agreement already that there's a regional set up of four elections. We're just trying to basically give it some bylaws or well, an agreement on how we're supposed to operate. It's a soup. Let me be setting up our superintendency union. Yes. So we're not looking at the frontier agreement. Right. We're looking at the union agreement, which doesn't exist on paper. Well, we don't. Right. Right. But it, 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 at some point, we assumed it existed. And, and as you're looking at, there was a vote made by the towns to join into this union. That's all I was just trying to differentiate between. So the town's board and decided clearly. And, and whether something was lost or never really put together, it, right. Right. I, I guess I wasn't sure, Bill, what you were talking about, raising some objection about having finance committee and everybody involved. I, we were already a, a, a union of the four elements. I, I, if I, I, if, if I, I could, know. if I could just say that I think the intent Darius has and and in the back of not in the back of my mind but the intent that I had was that if we form a subcommittee to investigate this then we can answer some of these very questions you're talking about um, you know we you, you're not going to resolve it this evening but I think we need to try and establish a subcommittee and see if we've got some people that would be willing to serve and put together in, working in consultation with council uh a a document and an agreement that uh we can either if it needs to be brought to town meeting votes then we would bring it to town meeting votes if it's something that can be voted on at the school committee levels we would do it that way but we need to we need to do the legwork first before we can really um you know have the legal i'll, I'll let the two lawyers sitting on opposite sides of the table there continue to to talk but i think um you know that was Darius's thought and my thought is to try and get this done and, you know, have the assistance of council in pulling together an agreement that formalizes much of what I've done for the 30 years that I've been doing this with the school committees. Um, so, and, and I think that's, you know, the step that needs to be taken. So. Yeah. Do you disagree, Phil, with trying to come up with something other than 1954? Um, I think it's, I think anytime you open something like this up, it, it is like a constitutional convention and uh, you don't know what is going to be coming down the pike. And that's why to me, I'm very nervous about the tyranny of the majority and, um, and, and that, uh, you know, with 17% of student population, if that's how it's going to go down, um, I'm, I get really more nervous than I would be otherwise. Um, that, that, that when that when we formed as a regional, even though at that time Deerfield was fifty four percent, we we were all equal share at that time. So we, could, we all had equal weight as towns to come into this agreement, and I think we should have equal weight as towns. Whatever uh, settings, put, putting this deci these decisions off to a subcommittee just means you'll get the subcommittee's answers, but it is up to us to decide how you want to enter what you want it to look like you could be saying make a subcommittee and let them decide but um I don't, I don't know. well i thought maybe it would just be finding let them recommend yeah subcommittee can start working on this because we've been talking about it for years um it's not, it's not subcommittees that can decide anything they're just going to hopefully do a lot of legwork and bring proposals forward on how, how we should and, go and it, it, I, mean, I think we all agree that it would have to be adopted by town meetings no, no we'll find out I mean, it depends on i mean you may find some lost document right so there may be something that's already been adopted by all the towns right and in theory that would be what the subcommittee would bring back and say 
this is what we discovered. Right? There's a lot of efforts to find it, but you're right. It may, it I may mean, not. right? I mean, I just before we start bringing things back to them, we need to find out that some things already did run. I mean, I would agree with though. There's something that's nervous about the fact that you start to question how you've done stuff in the past. At the same time, I see you're on the railroad tracks that eventually going to run out of track. Eventually, you're going to get into a conflict with a superintendent, and you don't have the ability, without uh, almost an absolute vote, to remove it. You don't have the legal, you don't have legality on your side. I, I'm, I'm saying as I'm saying as superintendent, you have many other things you receive. It's very easy when you look at just the superintendent what your role is. You know, but if you have split your decisions amongst the different towns, and that happens. And it's happened in other superintendencies around us. There are certain towns that wanted the superintendent to move on, or certain towns were with blue blowing their course, and you just don't have that. And so I think it's best to look at it, you know, when you have a stable, if you have a stable committee right now. We have a stable superintendent. Um, that was the time to look. I would say the time to look at it. I, I agree, though, though. There is something nervous about it because someone could say, "Well, you know, let's look at this and let's look at this," and it can kind of blow things up. But there's also something nervous about going forward without any parameters. I mean, it just I remember. I remember how you had to do the vote for superintendent. It was made you need to all vote for this group. And that's if everybody, even though there was disagreements on the super and, and going back, you know, several superintendents as well. Yeah, you know, the, the statement was made to make sure this is clean. We, we debated it out, it was, you know, votes and lost, you know, table votes, like different straw votes on certain things. In the end, they said, Well, we have to vote, you know, we, we need to have a, you know, we need to have a, you know, we're there for the vote. Yeah, we need to go for the vote. And you so, know what vote we're talking about, though? I sure do, because it was either all of us. Or we were going to have problems, not problems, but it just but so those, but it, that's but what I'm trying to solve. If you don't want to solve it, then you can just say no, Darius. But I think that's the. And, uh, so, I, I just say that a proposal to amend our current working relations, which would, that's what it would be. Like amending, right now it's all unwritten in uh, practice and custom. But a proposal to amend our practice and custom, our working relationship. Um, if, if, if you're entertaining doing that in some fashion that does not require town meeting approval, I would reject it. But we don't know yet. Right, right. We're, right, we don't know I yet. think it's up to us to say we can just say that that's what it's going to be. That's not going to be. I, but I think the value comes from having the the subcommittee research and come forward with a structure that hopefully you know defines what we've worked under in terms of you know past practice and and assumed um legalities so you know i'd like to get it down on paper and have it be formal and you know i personally there's not as there are no real financial implications involved with this, except in the hiring and setting of salaries for, you know, one or two administrators, it doesn't have the financial implications. So why wouldn't it be equal for all four towns to, to make decisions um, as opposed to the one, one person, one vote that you're talking about? So I understand what your concerns are, but if we don't get it down on paper and have a discussion on it, how do we know if we're amending anything or not, or whether it's worth amending? So I think we just need to get a subcommittee together and get this process started. We've been talking about it for going on 10 or 12 years now. <clears throat> so. Greg's, got a, Greg's got a question. Or Keith, I'm sorry. Just a light yes. Rather than amend, examine, would we be amending it right away? Examination. Um, I'm still a little about what would be exactly what we had and how it would affect the interregional agreement, how it would affect the frontier, and it's going to have implications on all those things, rather than amend the exam. We, we already have something for frontier, right? We're not talking, we're not about, talking about frontier, frontier. we're talking yeah. about the union. I mean, frontier is regional agreement, probably should be looking at at some point, too, but let's put that on the side. Superintendency union agreement. Right, but anything that we talk about is going to have an impact on those other so we have yeah, because if you do one central office, there's going to be stuff that is that flows from both 
code here, where one can take language from current frontier kind of thing to, to help with that as well. So, uh, it is the superintendent, the union superintendency agreement. Correct. Right. If I may, um, because this isn't a, a big dollar driver, um, I think if we were collectively the school teams, we get behind somebody. I don't want to speak for anybody in the pounds, but for some of them, I don't think it would be hard sell to the, to the select board. Um, that, you know, so uh, I don't necessarily see that we have to involve. I understand the desire to have it both in a town meeting. That makes sense to me. But I don't necessarily think that there are lots of select board members itching to get all of this. <laughs> it, it <wouldn't laughs> really like and, and, and I mean, it's not a hard sell that you should just, just, just do it. Um, but it, you know, the, we, we, the, the process, if, if there's a process now for Frontier, about how to amend or how to alter our working relationship. The idea of setting up a process for the other part of our relationship that is less than that or affords the minority towns less protections than that um, doesn't, it is not desirable from my point of view. And so, yeah. It's so, getting ahead of yourself. So we've got, we're not talking about NSF right now. We're talking about setting up a committee to look at this stuff and report back. Right. There's two lawyers on that committee, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, Dave. <laughs> so. Do you need a, a vote to do it, or do you want to So, one of those discussion items tonight, you know, you could um, look for people tonight, or you, you could put out, you know, this, this work could be next year's work. Perhaps fire this thing up and you know, we're summarize and go through it. You know, our deadline is probably to have it available. We really want to set a one year deadline, depending on the amount of work, is to have the work completed by March so that we can, by March 1, so we can get it on town meeting agenda. So it has to go back. Yeah. At, so, at the latest, yeah. It's going to be a crazy finish the school year this year. I'm not looking to have a ton of these coming out in the school year. Uh, you know, that kind of thing. So if we want to, want to take, I don't know how this group would be comprised. Again, I'm putting this, it's, I know it's a big group that kind of jumps on it, but you know. Well, why, why don't we just tell like a committee, just a school committee, appoint somebody to be on the committee? And then do you think there are other individuals not on school committee who should be part of the committee? Appoint them and then we'll be. I like and that idea. No, no rush yep. on it. We can do it in our April meeting. So I'll give you guys a meeting. Sure. So we'll give you we'll two days. April meeting. I mean, uh, this is the April meeting, the May meeting. Um, yeah, that sounds good. It was a, it gives people time to think about it. Okay. okay. Works. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> the next item here is the adjournment of the Frontier Committee. I need a motion to adjourn from Frontier. So moved. <laughs> I was, uh, okay, this is Frontier. Pop? Yep. Damien? Damien? Yes. Yep. Sorry. That's okay. Mary? Now you go home. Yes. Keith? Yes. Missy? I, yep. I can go back to my hotel room. <laughs> Judy, yes. Phil? Yes. Lynn? And before anybody leaves, um, one of the things I want to emphasize is when Donna sends out something that we need a quorum to find out and you don't do it, try to try to make her life a little easier by saying, yes, I can be there or remotely like some, like this meeting is because some people, you know, whether you look at your emails or not, but it really helps us a lot when you say, yes, I'm going to be there or no, I can't be there. But communicate with Donna. You know, when she sends out something, Yes, I'm going to be there. No, I'm not. Simple. That way, she's yeah. not pulling your hair out, calling me five times today. Right. <laughs> That's all. Sorry. Thanks, Mom. Watch here to leave. Okay. And Judy, are you going to stick around with us? Uh, if you invite me, in, yeah. I was going to ask if you could do that and uh, just continue your 
to uh, take, take notes for us. So uh, we're moving on to it. Initially, in a, a, uh, we'll be, we will be taking a motion to move into executive session for the purposes of um, discussing strategy with respect to collective bargaining. Um, and I wanna note that we will be coming back out of executive session to uh, conduct a formal vote on uh, two agreements. Um, so, so moved. if we can entertain my motion to enter executive session pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining for the union number 38 educators and educator support personnel. Uh, I would, we would need to have those motions made at each committee. I'll consider that a blanket motion. Um, Noting that we would be inviting um, Judy, Darius, um, Shelly into the meeting with us. So. And Scott Paul. Scott. And Scott Paul. Sorry. Um, okay, I'll start with Conway. Can I get a motion? I'll make a motion. Can I get a second? Cowboy School Committee, Elaine? Yes. Jared? Jared? Jared's still with us? Yes. Mary? Gary? Erica? Yes. David? Yes. Someone can make a motion. Uh, Greg? Yes. Keith? Yes. Jessica? Yes. Peter? Yes. Megan? Yes. Wait, wait, can I get a motion? So, can I get a motion? Okay, but I also, I, I don't know, there are a number of people out there that are attending that are not committee members. So what we're gonna do, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a breakout room, drop everybody in, all the committee members into that. Ooh, this is really impressive. <laughs> but they can- That's when I have the no pressure phone. Uh, so the people, yes, but the people- The technology you see in here, I made sure to do something fancy. Darius, as you drop those people, they can be told that they, if they wait, we'll be coming back to general session? Yes. Okay. This I've got to see. I just got to check and make sure I'm in the room by myself. One sec. <laughs> yes, I'm fine. <clears throat> Are we still recording? Do we need to be? Yeah, the recording will, will continue. What they've got okay. to do is drop the... <clears throat> uh, 
I still have one, two, three, four, five names appearing. Oh, there they go. I'd had a child um, at the foot of the bed, and I had to make sure she was gone. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, sure. She hasn't answered her phone. I guess she fell asleep. Or, no, she's gone. She's not here. Okay. We still got four, Darius. They're working on it. Yep, I got it. <clears throat> I actually just got a message about a um, an invitation for another call. I mean. All right, so, all right, sorry about the confusion on that. Instead, I just sent, okay. everybody's at home, I sent you the executive session link. We're going to make the executive session link up here. And he's going <coughs> to okay. okay, so the See you it. It, go to your email. And you can be coming back to this, to this one afterwards. The phone book. Right. <laughs> so we, uh, we have... Business to conduct is uh, two votes. One is to approve the settlement agreements between the Conway, Deerfield, Sunderland, and Wakeley School District School Committees and Union Number 38 Educators Association for the 2022-2025 contract years and authorize the chairs of the school committees to sign contracts. So we're going to start with your field. Can I get a motion? Yes. Yes. Mary. Yes. Erica. Yes. 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 Megan? Yes. Waitley is next. Motion? So moved. Uh, Maureen? Yes. Bob? Yes. Beth? Did Jared join? Jared's on his way. Looking for a charter Okay. <clears throat> do we want to go on to the IAs? Or do we want to wait? Sure. Why don't we do the IAs? That would be to approve the settlement agreements between the Conway, Deerfield, Sunderland, and Waitley School District School Committees and the Union 38 Educator Support Personnel for the 2022 through 2025 contract years and to authorize the chairs of the school committees to sign contracts. I got a motion. Deerfield. So, okay. Second. Uh, Maureen? Dave, uh, Ken? Yes. Mary? Mary? Yes. Erica? Yes. David? Yes. Someone next? Second. Uh, Greg? Yes. Keith? Yes. Jessica? Yes. Peter? Yes. Megan? Yes. Waitley? So moved. Maureen? Yes. Bob? Yes. Beth? Jared here yet? Don't I don't see him, him on here yet. I don't see him yet either. Come on, Jared. Do we want to give it one more minute or? Yes. What? What's that? He said he's trying to get out. I don't know what that looks like in Conway. Is he getting on the wrong invite? Start the engine up. Yeah, yeah. 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 the Gilligan's bicycle thing. Yeah. Yeah. Is he getting on the right invite? You guys can always vote on the next meeting. Put one speaker phone and have him do it by phone. We could. We could. Yeah, let's just do that. Hey, so. I can put you on speaker phone. There he is. 
Oh, there we go. Welcome back, Jared. Excellent. All right, I'll make a motion for Conway for the teacher's contract. Uh, Elaine. Yes. Jared. I know he's going to say yes. Phil. Second. Thank you. <laughs> I'll make a motion for the IA contract. I got a motion for Elaine. Uh, second that. Thank you. Uh, Elaine? Yes. Jared? Jared? Yes. No? Yes. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. So I'll make the motion adjourn. Second. Raise your hands. Raise your hands. Good night, everybody on the TV. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Take care. Bye.